let's let's start. So <clears throat> I send you the setup um, to your emails, group emails. So and you can probably download it and uh, open on your laptops as well. So that today we will discuss mostly two problems and and then why extension from, from the lectures. And so let's start from from the first one. Uh, have you already downloaded the the setup? Yeah. Yeah, because it's maybe will be comfortable if you can open it and and read. So I will give you one two minutes to to go through the first part. Okay, to or first four questions. And maybe. Yeah, uh, let's let's start from the setup and, and then first question. So then you can read and we will discuss the setup. Okay, do you have any questions for, for the first part? Let me then uh, again one second. Now you're observing my uh, whiteboard. And let me turn on another camera so you can see me. I'm here now. And nothing. How we will proceed? So I will write here the solution. So, uh, firstly, let's see the setup. So we have uh, the product, the, the operation system, and then uh, so we have a, a heterogeneity preferences de defined by x. So x is distributed from zero to one uniformly. So what we know that. Zero, one, and x somehow uniformly distributed. Like this. So, and, and each uh, consumer will like to, to join the, to buy the software more. The one who has one or the one who has 
zero x For example, if I'll take consumer here, green one, and consumer blue here. So which one will will like to to buy the system more? Blue one. Yes. Yeah, so since it's written that the the one with lower X, so we'll prefer stronger prefer to to buy the product and with higher, not so much. So then N is the share of total proportion. Of people who 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 buy the the software. So let me now denote n on our so then who will join the the platform and who not? To the left they will join and to the right they won't. Yes. Great. So now we kind of understand what's going on in our distribution. So this um, join, right? Not. So then um, again, our utility is done. The so utility is for some chosen agent. Which has exact x as a uh, personal parameter. So if you join, we got this utility, otherwise, zero. So my question to you is why we do need zero here? Because we can't uh, force the consumer to buy the good. Yeah, exactly. So there could be the models. Then we consider the situation. Then you have to choose between uh, several platforms, for example. But here you have outside option, so that you can buy the product or you cannot. Then your reserved utility is just just zero. And we can see that uh, yeah, the, the utility depends on N, which presents the network externalities in the model. So any questions about this setup? Then let's, let's move to first, uh, first question. So we need to write down the equation that shows the utility of the consumer who is indifferent between uh, buying the product or not, and I yeah, call this equation one. So let's do it. So what we need to do, and what we need to think about here. So we need to um, to compare uh, both the utilities and say that they are equal to this individual. Yes, so we, we can see again, so if we consider the, the consumers from zero to one, we know that we take X. So if we move to the left, then 
uh, consumers would like to uh, to buy the product more. If we move to the right, uh, the consumer would like to uh, not to buy the the product. So then we can find such X head, and then the person will be indifferent probably. Uh, so yeah, we need to be sure that this uh, this person is. Uh, in our interval from zero to one, but uh, so then we can discuss. Yeah, if if he's from our equation, if he's below zero, then no one joins. No, like everyone. No, no one joins. Yeah, and if uh, x hat above one, so then uh, everyone joins. But yeah, we need to equalize our utilities. And then right here the x head. Okay, then how can they th think about n here? So, for example, we write this equation for. Shouldn't it be n expected? Uh, yes. Uh, if we are thinking about uh, Nash equilibrium, it's going to be. But here we write it for, so we, what we are starting from, it's a consumer who is indifferent, right? So then, let me, so then on this picture, uh, so can you show me who joining, who not, if the X hat is indifferent person? That's just a simple question. Still the same, so to the left join, to the right not? Yes, so then N equals to what? Here on the graph. P divided by one minus X estimated? Oh, no. <laughs> so you know exactly that share of the people who joins is those who on the left from X. Ah, okay. Head, right? Yes. In this case, it's just uh, X head minus zero, so X head. Yes. Exactly. So then we can rewrite this uh, equation as X head one minus X head minus P. So, small remark, you remember from the lecture that um, in the lecture the agent will, so was uh, more better than his uh, theta was greater. So then we, uh, in the lecture was that n equals to one minus theta because there was different direction of preferences. And now n equals to x. Head. So, okay, great, uh, this equation one. We are done for first one. So then let's move to to the second. What is there? <clears throat> yes, those who on the left side strictly happier to buy the product, so they buy. So those who the right, and, and we can, so again, I will use the same color. So this share is one minus X. At, and on the left we have, okay, once again, X hat. Oh, we already rewrite the equation, right? So, So then how the figure will look like for, for this task. So what we need, we need now the function P of X. So what we asked to do. So imagine the graph, the X on, on the right and P on the top. 
and we have equation so that if we will re rewrite this one so we will have a so not x p equals x hat 1 minus x Yes, and if you are thinking about x, x can be from 0 to 1, right? Because all our consumers are on this interval. So, and here we are thinking about that our indifferent x hat can be here. So then how price will, will depend on it. So what I should draw here. You just, uh, you should just draw the parabola. So, but the, there will be the maximum, and there will be the intersection with zero point, or whatever. It should the be there. It will be at the, at the middle of the interval. Yes, yeah, so that this is maximum, right, in, in one half. But, so from which point I should start? Okay, then uh, at which point uh, price equal, yeah, price equal to zero from zero and then it's maximum and that goes down to, to one. Right. Yeah, I think by now we are doing simple stuff. But, okay, let's move to the third. Uh, question or maybe you have any questions so you can just stop me and and ask any questions you you, you have that's okay it's clear by now great so then uh, the third one so we need to pick uh, some point on figure so we'll come back to our um, our picture, so they need to pick x uh, l hat 0, which is uh, below 1 half. So which one we will, we, you would like to pick? So here. Just name someone. Let's pick well, one fourth. One fourth, okay. Great. So then now they need to find the the P zero, which uh, I will use the same color. So the P zero, yeah, which is satisfied to this X. So they need to consider on the graph, yeah, the price, which is. Here. So what we need to do, they need to use our equation, right? So they need to plug in the the x uh, hat no zero one minus x hat uh, l zero. So this is one fourth, three fourth, right? And it's three sixteen. Great. 
So then, uh, so then we need to to find another x which satisfied this uh, this price as well. So you can see on the graph that uh, for this price which we picked. And we picked x, but for this price which we calculate, there are another one, probably x, right? On the right side of the graph. So we call it x hat i 0, y 0, which is greater than 0 0.5. So can you guess which one it is? It should be three fourth. Yeah, by symmetry. Right. And let's check it. Right. And then one minus three fourth, it's one fourth, right? And it's the same. Okay, great. Then maybe a more tricky question. Which uh, Which of these points uh, would be more stable equilibrium for this price, and why? So then, then we are thinking about the stability. What we should think about? Do we uh, suggest some kind of uh, dynamic changes or what? Mm. Because as I get it, we either have an uh, equilibrium and it's uh, stable in the sense of Nash, or we don't. Like if the agents uh, have incentives to manipulate, we don't have this uh, equilibrium. Uh, the Nash equilibrium is so it could be that um, that it's not profitable to deviate for exactly one person given the rest are fixed. Uh, but for example, if you think about two or three devi deviations simultaneously, so that means that equilibrium are not stable, but uh, Yeah, but you still have Nash equilibrium, right? So since the, for exactly one person, it's not uh, it's not profitable to deviate. So what we should think about? So we should think about deviations, right? Or dynamic, as was mentioned. And what what does it mean stability at all? If we are talking about some deviations, or if you move somewhere from the equilibrium. Well, in the, I know, general sense of the stability of equilibrium, it means that uh, the equilibrium will some sort of... Uh, stay pretty much the same if we change the parameters a little bit. Yes, exactly. So then here we have agents and uh, and platform. Yes, so what, what platform decide on is a price. So the decision of the platform is price. The decision of the agents is uh, to join the, the platform or not. So that's the two sides which make some decisions. And then uh, mm, what what uh, platform cares about is the profit, right? So the, the profit increase if you increase the price and if you increase the number of uh, of users, right? 
that's obvious. Uh, so then uh, the, the users join if uh, their utility increase. Their utility increase if more users already joined the platform. So then, uh, once once again, so the, the the profit of the of the firm or the um, or the platform is uh, increasing in in price and probably in number of of consumers who join. So that and then know that uh, number of consumers is x. What is this letter, like the first one? This one? Or the first one? The first one is P. Mm -hmm. OK. So and then the utility of some consumer X is, you know, what is this? Yeah, we know. <laughs> but I forgot. <laughs> OK. Uh, and 1 minus X and minus P. Here zero, and they can rewrite it as uh, x hat one minus x here because it's for exact consumer, right? So they think about this consumer, and then platform spreads. Why do we still have x and not x hat? Okay, <laughs> once again, because yeah. xhead is the ind indifferent consumer, right? He defines yes. who is joins the market. But now we think about just some random consumer on the market. Yes, so that's that's why n here goes to a, a x hat. But we are talking not about the indifferent consumer, but about some some else, someone. It could be indifferent, but could be not. That's why here we need to you have x because in our setup uh, right the x uh, hat can be either uh, x hat high zero right and the second one was x hat low zero we already choose them right this one fourth this Three, four. But x uh, can be can be something from zero to, to one. Okay, then now let's think. What will happen if we, for example, we are platform? We want to increase our profit. So what we can do? We can increase or decrease the price. Probably, if we increase the price, we will expect our profit to uh, to grow, but maybe the the demand will be less, right? So then we need to equalize these forces. So now let's come back to our picture. We have two two equilibriums. The green one here. And the blue one on the left. Let's consider the the blue one firstly. Excuse me. Uh, so we know uh, because of the profit of the firm and what we solved uh, just yet uh, that n is equal to x hat, right? That the indifferent consumer he defines uh, the amount of uh, consumers at all, right? Uh, the consumers who joins the market, yes. yeah. OK. So then the question, if, if you are in the, bl uh, in the blue point, what will be if I will try to increase the price? So let's, I will consider that if I, if I move the price up. The profit will increase too. Uh, the profit will increase to why? Uh, because uh, because its head uh, becomes uh, becomes uh, uh, bigger, higher. 
Exactly. So exactly. if you, if you will increase the price uh, in in point uh, x uh, hat l zero, so which will lead to increase in x uh, zero l, which will increase the number of users on the platform, right? So that uh, if you increase the price, uh, the demand will be even higher. So would that be this point stable? While we are still here, uh, how can we understand uh, that if we increase uh, the price, this uh, x hat will increase? Will it move if we uh, push uh, the price or not? So we have our main equation, which is uh, price equal to uh, x hat, 1 minus x hat. So that the need that uh, if we will change the price, the, the the ratio of consumers will adapt according to our red line. So if we will increase the price and consider another line, then uh, the equilibrium from uh, blue point will move to to another one here. And this will be greater L uh, x L log, uh, zero head, so which will increase the number of uh, consumers. Right before it was this one, and then it's yeah this. Okay, is it clear? Yeah, it is. Great. So then, uh, what happens? Mm, we can increase the price, and this will increase our profit because we increase uh, just the price. And then the number of users will increase, so we have double effect. Since we, we increase the price, and we increase the number of users. So then this is probably unstable, right? Because what you will expect in, in, in the equilibrium in stable one, that if you will increase the price, the demand goes down. Otherwise, you, you want to increase the price as much as, as possible. So then, uh, what happens in the green point? Can you, can you say me what happens if I increase the price? Uh, the demand will, f will go down, but uh, shouldn't we maximize our profit function? Uh, uh, instead of P, we should put uh, x hat, 1 minus x hat, and um, all it... Uh, and maximize this function, not only look at the x, which uh, goes down or goes up. Uh, look, uh, look. By, and by now, we are discussing which which of the equilibriums are more stable. It, it's not says that it's absolutely stable or it's it's an uh, equilibrium in in some uh, in some sort of the the problem. Because here we are not discussing costs, for example, which can be presented for firm, right? We are not talking about which uh, type of the market we have. Is that monopoly, duopoly, perfect competition, right? So then hmm, we're just thinking about the forces which can be on the market. So for the left one, we already see that if you increase the price, the, the number of consumers goes up. Uh, so here, we increase the price, the number of consumers goes down, right? Because we are moving to the to the left side. So when we have uh, the two forces which moves our profit in different directions, so we have different direction forces. 
So then the next question, what will be if I will decrease the price? Yes, we will move by red line to the right point. Yeah, the number of users increase, and this will increase the profit. But decreasing price will uh, negatively affect our profit. So then the answer is then on on the left. On the left side, we have uh, less stable equilibrium and on the right side you have more stable equilibrium because we have uh, the forces which moves us um, back and but in, in the first point uh, we have uh, the situation then increasing price will lead to uh, even more profits and, and we will want to increase more price well, then let me Let me write it down here so that increase in and if you decrease the price again you will have What is crucial here is that you have two forces which works in, in, in different directions. That's why this point is more stable. <coughs> Questions? OK. So then. Uh, but we can't say for sure which effect is going to be stronger, right? Yeah, right, right. We just know that uh, here we have the effects which works in different directions, but on the left point we have the, the two effects which goes together, so it's for sure not the stable equilibrium. But yeah, probably that in equilibrium these forces are supposed to be equal. That's kind of that you expect to be in the equilibrium, right? So, yes, okay. Okay, you, you're right that in profit maximization problem, you have to write your profit function, you have to take the first order derivative, maximize it, find the solution, that's true. So the first, uh, oh, then the next, question is let's consider the production and let's say that uh, the marginal cost of producing one more copy is zero okay. the costs are zero so and then if we consider the competitive industry What is the price and what is the M? So what does it mean competitive industry? Like Amar uh, equal to MC? No? About that? Yes. So if you have perfect competition and zero cost, what would be the price? In other words? It would be zero two. Right. So then the price is zero. And what is the the share of agents? Then
So with that, we need to go back to our graph, right? It uh, should be zero as well. Is it? It would be one. Yeah, generally we have two, uh, two points, yes, with intersections, so zero and, and one. So then, you know that our utility is what? And minus x. So to think about uh, uh, what it will be, so we need to consider the, the utility, which is n1 minus x, and then minus p. So minus p we can forget, so it's with just n1 minus x. So let's say that uh, um, the, the equilibrium is zero, and let's consider the first guy who is or is here uh, the first who has um, who is more preferred to to join the join the market? So if you will join the market, uh, what will be the the utility? The utility will be slightly positive, right? Since n will increase from zero to some small share, and then he will receive most, uh, yeah, almost one from from his preferences. So then probably he would like to join, and and then in equilibrium, and then the number will be one. And it's again we are talking about uh, some general discussion. If we have the formal uh, discussion about the Nash equilibrium, for example, zero, zero will be the equilibrium as well, because there is no incentives to, to deviate from, from zero point, right? So if if we, we are talking about Nash equilibriums, then it's, there are two, so there are zero, zero and uh, zero, one. Why uh, there are no incentives? So <clears throat> the agent will still uh, receive some kind of positive uh, utility, so why not to join? Even if I am uh, the only one on Facebook, I will get well, some utility from it. Oh, okay, you're, you're right, yeah, <laughs> I forgot. So since, since n already increased, so you can increase by joining the one agent slightly n and uh, as well, yeah. So that's it's true, so this, this is not. Yes, uh, good to notice, thank you. So then, any questions here? And we will move to, to the second part. Still with uh, the zero, is it even equilibrium? So we can see that it's a solution, but it's hard Yeah, I don't it. think that, yeah, it's, it's equilibrium. I think. Yeah, when we are talking about equilibrium, you should talk about concepts. If Nash equilibrium it's not, we already show that yeah, the uh, at least one will join. So then probably we'll have uh, everyone connected to to the platform. So everyone will buy the product. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's move to the next. Uh, next one. So now we will have different utility. So we have again the, the distribution from zero to one, but our utility changed to. A X v and x squared minus p or zero and 
and the do can uh, should do kind of the same. We need to write down the equation, which shows that the utility of the consumer who is indifferent. And we have some assumptions here, so that A is non-negative and V is positive. So how it looks like the, the equation for indifferent? Just the first equation equal to zero. Yes, and if you're thinking how we can substitute M here. So if you're thinking about the indifferent agent on, so if we are talking about the utility. No, it's, it's not utility, but okay. So if you can see that our uniform distribution of agents, and we pick some indifferent, who will join the market and who not. Those who uh, who have high access should join. Yes, yeah, since our utility now increasing in X, so then those who are to the right will join. And what is N now? So we still have uniform distribution. It uh, should be one minus x hat. Yes. By the way, can you can you see me? Yes. Okay, great. Because uh, my laptop that doesn't show. Uh, sorry, and uh, why we say that uh, utility uh, is uh, higher when uh, when x is when x is bigger? Uh, it's a parabola, so for some axes uh, the utility will decrease. No. Mm. Once again. And, uh, for some axes, uh, the utility will decrease as uh, it's a uh, it's parabola. So. Uh, uh, yes, but uh, there is the minimum of this parabola. Oh, okay, it's in the negative side of the... Of the yes, yes, yeah. you're right. Yeah, so it, it, it's a bit advanced here to talk about the uh, the fraction, maybe, but okay. So then we can rewrite our equation as yeah. So if you start from zero, we we just have only increasing part. 
So that will be x hat plus v y minus x hat x hat squared plus two p. So that's our equation. And then the second question is we need to assume a equals to zero and v equals to one. So then we need to find the maximum p available for platform and draw the figure that shows price as a function of x hat. So then a equals to zero and now our equation is uh, one minus x hat, x hat squared. So how to find the, the maximum? So they need to take the first other derivative with respect to x. and consider cases. But because there are probably will be not, uh, and equalize it to zero and consider solutions. So what is the derivative of P as a function of X hat? Mm, 2 x hat minus 3 uh, x hat squared. So one, let, let me do it so slowly. So this one and then minus squared. Right. Minus 2 minus 3. Yes. And they need to equalize this to zero. So what are the solutions? Yeah, so the probably the equation is x hat two minus three x zero. So then x hat one equals to zero, which is obvious. And the second one is the first, right? So then which one is the maximum? The first one. So the first one is, is zero. If you will put the, the price of zero, then it will be yeah, one minus zero, zero squared, it's zero. So what is the price of two thirds? Well, this is one third and two thirds squared, right? This is four eighty ones. No, twenty seven. So the maximum is in point two thirds, and the the maximum price available is. 427. So then we need to draw our um, our function. Yeah, that's more tricky. We know already about the maximum. So our equation is this one so we already know that uh, our maximum is in point two thirds and we know that in zero we are in point zero
So what we should do to draw this function? We should count the second derivative. Yeah, and then yeah. analyze yeah. the function. And then, so then, probably let me rewrite uh, the first derivative. That P is. What will be the second one? Two bit two minus six X, right? So it's uh, concave. So if you are talking about the first derivative, when the first derivative is positive and then it's negative. So we already know that two thirds is the maximum. So then the first derivative is positive if x greater than or lower than two thirds, right? What we are thinking about if, if this is greater or equal than, than zero. So it's zero in two thirds. Then if x is lower, then we are positive, so the function is increasing here. And decreasing on the, on the right side. So then uh, let's think about the second derivative. So the crucial point here is, which one? One third. So before one third, it will be convex, and after that, it will concave. It will be concave. So then, let's start from the uh, the, the zero point. The derivative in point zero is zero. So that means that the direction of our line from zero is supposed to be horizontal. Then let's draw it. And then it concave, concave, not convex, convex to point zero point three. It's kind of like this. Then at the point one third, not zero point three, right? One one third. And one third happens, then we are in the positive second derivative, and this is convex, uh, concave. So, uh, concave and till maximum in point in point two thirds. So then we know that we are concave as well. But we need to calculate the there we end, so that the price of point one is is zero as well, right? So we need to end up in zero. So then we are going. Back to to one. And we know that the derivative here in this point in one. is not 
zero, right? So this is what is this? This is minus minus one. Minus one, which means that we are we have the minus forty five degree here of of slope. Okay, uh, is it clear? Is it understandable how you draw the graph? Yes. So again, uh, if our Yeah, uh, sorry. Uh, so, uh -huh. again, if our uh, second uh, derivative is uh, greater than zero, then uh, our function uh, with those axes is convex, right? Yes. And if it's less than zero, then our function is concave. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Thanks. So let me write it so it's positive, and then it's uh, convex, uh, negative concave. Mm, yeah, that's it. So then they draw it. Mm -hmm. Then the next question is quite hard. <laughs> so I think let's let's take a break right now for twenty minutes. Yeah, and and then continue because we we need to take a break right in ten minutes, and and then we will finish this problem and and move on. Okay. 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 So then probably see you in 12.30, Paul Perova. And yeah, so the link will be the same, so I will not switch off the, the meeting. OK. See you.